Ladies and gentlemen in this RedGamerTed.com video, how would you like to be able to play 4K at 60 frames a second? Well, assuming you can afford around 1200 US dollars, then you can do just that with the new Titan. That's right, the 2016 GP102 Titan X is going to be launched, which has an astounding, an astonishing, a staggering 11 T-flops of single precision performance. It's around 60% faster than the Titan is succeeding based upon the Maxwell architecture, which is absolutely staggering. The card is going to be targeting a 250 watt TDP and will be equipped with an 8 and a 6 pin power connector. This will power 3584 CUDA cores, 224 TMUs, and 96 ROPs, and 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. Yeah, that's right, the card is using GDDR5X, I'll get into that in a moment, with a boost clock of 1531 megahertz and an effective memory clock of 10 gigahertz. Now, one common complaint that I'm uh, seeing over the internet at the moment and it's certainly one that struck me is the fact that it is using GDDR5X rather than HBM2. Now we do know of course that Pascal, and this is pretty well established, does have various memory compression technologies which are obviously a step above Maxwell but it is still a little disappointing it's not using HBM2. Your guess is as good as mine how memory bandwidth constraints is going to be unfortunately the only way we can really find out is to get the card and either down clock the you know gpu core and start raising the memory clocks or just to raise the memory clock period and then let's say for the sake of argument you raise the memory clock um i don't know 200 300 megahertz and you reduce the core clock, let's say 200 megahertz, just examples, and you notice the frame rates going up, then obviously you can tell, yeah, this is a bit memory bandwidth constrained, although it may depend upon the application, levels of anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, or whatever that you're tending to do. But NVIDIA are touting this card to be able to run 4K at 60 frames per second. And honestly, I think for the majority of titles, for almost all titles, this is certainly accurate. I mean, I'm testing at the moment an MSI GTX 1070, which has got a hefty factory overclock, and adding an additional overclock of my own, I'm running most games 1080p at just ludicrous frame rates, but when you start going up the resolutions, even at 4K, it's running like Doom in Vulcan at like almost 60 FPS locked. It's just ridiculous. And the Titan X the um, Pascal derivative obviously just to clarify has quite a few more CUDA cores than the GTX 1070 which has 1920 whereas once again the Titan X has almost double that at 3584 so you can start seeing just how ridiculous the performance differences are between these cards so there are a couple of things I wanted to tackle with this GPU because I'm sure most of you have uh, a pretty good indication of what the performance of the card could potentially be but I wanted to give my two cents to it so this card does obviously support SLI however there is a small mystery at the moment we know that it will handle SLI technology through HB SLI but the issue is we don't know the number of cards which can be connected together and I've looked through a couple of different reports and there's at the moment of the time I'm recording this there is no information on there. So it's possible that it may be limited to just a couple of cards or it could scale up to whatever number. The other thing is that it's really really expensive. Now just for example the GTX 1080 puts out around 9 T-flops of performance, which is a lot. And that's because of a hefty boost clock. That's around 1733 megahertz. That puts it at 9 T-flops compared to 11 of the Titan X. Now I know they are certainly targeting different markets and that's all fine, but for the average gamer, you're looking to pay twice the price for the Titan X. Now what does that mean to you and I? Honestly, if you've got that amount of money to throw around, I would run to GTX 1080s or two GTX 1070s. Or, 
you know, whatever you can fit into your budget, rather than a Titan X. Now, once again, obviously, the Titan X is aimed at certain demographics, and I completely and utterly understand that, but it is really expensive, and um, it's certainly going to be marketed towards the, uh, the Rolls Royce owners of the GPU world. It'll be interesting to see if custom cooler variants are going to improve things any. Perhaps we're going to see um, an 8 plus an 8 pack pin power connecting version which will obviously increase the TDP a little bit and we might see less, um, well, frankly, less meager core clocks. I would love to have seen the core clock which is equal to around the 1700 mark. But obviously at the end of the day we can only wait to see what happens. I am a little disappointed with no HBM2. Um, and as most of you are aware, HBM2 is of course the new generation of memory technology and will offer ludicrous amount, uh, amounts excuse me, of memory bandwidth, up to about, a, well, a terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, which is absolutely staggering, obviously depending on how many stacks of HBM2 you're going to go for. My assumption is that they don't feel that the... GPU is going to be hamstrung enough at these at these clocks to warrant HBM2, but obviously, once again, until we start getting it and doing some testing, we won't know for sure. Now, early rumours were that there are two variants of the Titan of the of the Titan Pascal. Now, how accurate, how truthful those rumours are, I'll leave to your discretion and how much salt you want to put on the rumour, but. The basic synopsis was that there was one that was going to be using GDDR5X, which we can assume is this one, and there's another one that's going to be using HBM2, which we can assume is probably going to come at a later date. This is possibly one of the reasons that AMD are holding off on their high-end graphics cards as well, but there are some questions with AMD, like the biggest question is regarding the, um, well, the RX... 490 like what the hell is that about and obviously the common the common theory with rx 490 is it's going to be essentially two um two four eight is strapped together in some uh, weird frankenstein's monster of a gpu which is fine as long as uh i guess we got we get good crossfire support it could potentially be done via hardware but we'll have to just wait this card is a flagship card that doesn't mean that it's a bad GPU. I mean, like, if you've got the money, if you're, you know, extremely affluent and you've got the cash to go ahead and buy one or two or 50 of them, that's down to your money. I'm not criticizing anyone for doing that, but I would certainly not say to the average customer that this is a GPU for them. A website by the name of VR World had reported that they'd actually been given a Titan. I'm not sure exactly how that worked, why they were given it, or what have you. But the high-end product was targeting a 50% higher performance than the GTX 1080 Founders Edition. And that card is supposedly so fast it was actually being bound by the CPU. So, essentially the GPU was so rendering frames at such a fast rate that the CPU could not feed data to it so fast enough to be able to well, keep it fed. Now, the interesting thing is, back in those rumours, they had said that one product was, just to go over old ground here, GDDR5X 12 gigs, which means that, and I quote, this is from the article, while the big daddy should still get HBM2 memory. Unfortunately, we don't know, of course, when that's going to come out, and it's supposedly going to be a 300 watt part for this particular GPU. So all we can do is just wait, because... This card, which they are calling the Titan P, is going to be, at least according to them, unveiled on August the 17th slash 21st, which, well, all we can do is wait, unfortunately. I know I've said that a couple of times, which is not perhaps the most exciting of things for me to tell you. Hey, we can wait for some information, which is shit to be totally honest, and I would love to be able to give you solid info, but unfortunately it would just be me pulling things out of my ass, which isn't really, you know, good. I could certainly speculate, and I'll say that if it is true and it's 50% faster, then we're going to have so many sodding CUDA cores in there, they're probably going to have to use, like, you know, a quantum singularity to be able to uh, fit them all in, but 
it's going to be an absolute monstrous thing. I mean, I don't even want to see the number of bloody transistors in this thing. I mean, it's, it's going to be absolutely freaking insane. And I'm assuming we're going to be looking at higher clock speeds with presumably a greater number of CUDA cores. As far as I can see, the earlier reports did not say the number of CUDA cores were in the very super duper high end configuration. I'm going to assume, and this is my assumption, it's going to be around the 4000 range, which would be nuts. Um, and because the Titan, I'm sorry, the GGX 1080 has around 2560, it would make sense for it to have around the 4000 mark with a presumably equal clock speed. But once again, that's just speculation on my part, so I don't want to tell you that's fact when it's not. It's just me um, putting words into basically the article's mouth. So I, I, I could not even imagine what the MSRP for the very super high-end Titan is going to be. But for this Titan, the one that's been announced and we know is definitely a real thing and not you know pix made from pixie dust and uh, and wishes, is going to cost you twelve hundred bucks. Personally. Very nice card, looks freaking sexy as hell, and it's certainly a lot of kudos to say that, yeah, I've got a Titan, but I don't think it's something that the average user should uh, be chasing. But anyway, that's just my opinion on the whole thing. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, it's been a bit longer than what I anticipated, and yes, that's what she said, but I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.